Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, Spice and Wolf, Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf, Season 1. Uh, yep, Spice and Wolf, Merchant Meets the Wise Wolf, Season 1, Episode 25. Welcome back to the Dojo, I'm Ryu. That's Age, we're back from our Anime Night in the Dojo, and uh, this is going to be the end of the season here. Um, you know, a plan was made, we don't get to know the plan, so it's probably going to work. That typical trope, we've... Uh, seen it uh, actually multiple times in this season alone let alone in other shows as well so yeah we'll just have to see how that pans out but um you know pretty much everything we talked about last week you know how uh the relationship between uh mendez and franz how that's gonna come uh into uh play here whether how it was in the past um we speculated on multiple angles so we'll just have to see which one of those angles it is um which could very well change the plan but uh, I'm sure, I'm sure that yeah, Elsa told them, you know, the relationship at some point. So if that was even part of the plan at all, because uh, as it stands, we uh, speculate that Holo is going to drop a bunch of wheat. Because that's what it seemed like, unless she's doing something else. But man, that's what it felt like. <laughs> now, I made the joke about the wheat golem, but uh, I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> so... The miracle will be performed, uh, and uh, the church will have to make a decision. I mean, it's been a solid season. We'll uh, do the typical wrap-up. Um, I mentioned this yesterday on Slime, but uh, since uh, none of the dubs for the stuff that is coming out in October have even started yet, um, we're just going to wait for it uh, instead of just starting something else. So, um, especially with all the crap that we have coming up here at the end of the year, uh, <laughs> it'd probably be nice to have like a like a week where we only do like two things and just kind of get ready for the fact that we're going to have like eight things to do. It's not eight things, <laughs> but it's freaking close because we have Arcane coming in November and we're just going to be doing that as its own thing, which will be adding to those three weeks because, you know, Netflix and its damn binge culture, they can't put it out in nine weeks. They're going to put it out in three weeks. So that's going to be fun. Um, and then we have ReZero is returning to the channel. One of the first shows we ever did. Bleach is continuing. Don Machi's coming back. Uh, MF Ghost is coming back. We also have freaking um, what was the other show? Oh, we have Nier. to we have to get to Near as well. So it's crazy. There's so much stuff. <laughs> there, there's definitely a couple things that we wanted to do uh, that came out this season that we're just gonna have to push back to like January or whenever this set ends because we just don't have space for it. That's simple. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, if there's not anything on uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays uh, for uh, like a week or two, it's just because the dubs haven't started. It's that simple. And I'd rather have like that like buffer zone of like two weeks so we don't run into like a slime situation again. Though, to be fair, the slime situation did allow slime and spice and wolf to end on the same week. So it wasn't the worst thing of all time. Uh, as for this, uh, we'll be wrapping this up today. So the episode might be a little bit longer because we'll be talking about the season on a whole as usual. And we'll have Victoria roll the uh, stills of the season and stuff like that, as you see every on the right side of me here. So, um, that being said, yeah, uh, I don't really expect anything, like, too ridiculous. Uh, we know the story is definitely going to be continuing, especially since the author has, uh, you know, continued Spice and Wolf as a series. So, uh, depending on the reception of this, which I can't imagine the reception was bad. I mean, it was quite good for what it was. Like, I don't really have any serious complaints yeah. about this, so... Um. Yeah, uh, once again, we're ending somewhere around Volume 4. The original run of Spice and Wolf was 17 volumes. Got it. And then that's when Parchment started, which is currently at 9 volumes. And, like, five years or so after Spice and Wolf stopped, the author went back to Spice and Wolf, and now Spice and Wolf is up to somewhere around, like, 25 volumes. Right. So, we'll just have to see what they do with the show, because, um... Not all, uh, things that get adapted to anime continue to follow the series. It's that simple. <laughs> Even in this day and age where they love to just pump stuff out uh it's not always the case for a myriad of reasons so anyway 
um it'd be nice i i'd like the show to continue I, i'd like most you know solid shows to continue but that's not always the case so uh it's kind of like kind of wanting people to actually go read the source material which is totally fine i, I get it um because you know the authors make far more money off of like the actual manga or light novel or whatever it is than they off the royalties from the anime which makes sense in a way but also i think the creators should get a much bigger cut than they do but everything's expensive let's face it and we'll leave it at that so anyway let's go ahead push some buttons and see how this wraps up at least for this season so here goes something Burn this false idol and swear fealty to the one true God. For if you do not, then we shall declare your village pagan. <sighs> Humans, always looking to be saved. Though, I would not be here myself if not for man's mercy. The people of Enberg, mm -hmm. followers of God above, have suffered terribly under the effects of a curse that has spared the dwellers of Terio. Mm -hmm. This immunity of theirs is clearly due to the protections of a twisted pagan god. Thus, to free them from this evil, we must build here a church of the true faith. As if God would speak through you. <clears throat> Look, <gasps> it's growing! <gasps> and the church of this village? <laughs> It's legitimate. The church is legitimate. Then I would ask for you to put that in writing. <laughs> yeah, getting stuff in writing is important. <laughs> <laughs> I smell an opportunity. Hmm? What's wrong? Well, I am beginning to wonder if you are not part wolf yourself. Huh? Done. 140 it is then. Did everyone bear witness to that? Now to the next item of business. How would you like to buy back the several carts of wheat flour you just returned? We can broker peace by devising a new deal that benefits all. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> what are you planning? <laughs> to start, we'll need to borrow the expertise of the baker here. Huh? Requirements are pretty basic. Eggs and butter, primarily. Honey, too, if you've got it. This question perplexed me for the longest time. Why did my father so passionately collect stories of pagan deities? I came to realize that he wasn't losing his belief in our god. Not at all. He was seeking to confirm his existence through the manner of confirming theirs. Yes, he was. Travelers don't leave behind regrets. They leave behind... Only fond memories. <laughs> and local legends, apparently. <laughs> right then. That is enough for today. What? It has grown late. And you should be in bed. We can't stop there. I want to hear more of the story. There is more of it, isn't there? There's no need to rush it. The best journeys are measured in distance, not time. But... <laughs> He's home! Hold it! <laughs> Where are you going, you little fool? I have to welcome him home! We'll continue the story tomorrow. That's a promise, all right? <laughs> all right, all right. After all, there is still plenty more story to tell. Indeed. <laughs> All right, so um, there you have it. Uh, <laughs> uh, something to the effect of producing more wheat. Pretty much. I mean, Hola's a harvest goddess, so uh, yeah, she can, you know, make it grow. Who would have guessed? <laughs> well, the particularly, like, miraculous, quote-unquote, thing about this is that she's causing flour to grow into wheat. Yeah. It's so, not like, you know, she's making wheat grains, the actual seeds grow into wheat. She's literally causing flour, which is milled into a powder, to sprout back into wheat. 
right? And then it showed off the one that was actually, you know, the plant, the actual bad wheat that didn't actually come from here. Uh, so, solid plan. Uh, but yeah, turning flour back into, you know, just grown wheat is uh, definitely uh, on the category of uh, God stuff. So, <laughs> there you go. Um, we didn't really get much on, uh, like, Mendez's actual relationship with Franz. It was more or less just kind of like, yeah, the church tolerated him, but, you know, he uh, clearly strayed from the path with uh, Turio and all that stuff, so... Well, so, the way Mendez spoke of him, like, he still did have a respect for Franz. And, like, a lot of the church apparently still did, you know, respect his faith. The problem, the problem they had with him was just the fact that he kept entertaining pagans. Right. When the church very much is against the idea that pagans should even exist. Yeah. And it's one of those things, and Elsa mentions it too, is like, well, and there are other, like, examples of stuff like this where in the case that Elsa was pointing out during this whole situation here is like, well, how do you guys know that Turio isn't just, you know, a creation of our god and is just kind of like a... You know, hey, I'm putting this like uh, creature here as like a protector of this area kind of deal. You know what I mean? Like a just like an emissary of myself kind of deal. So it's one of those things that uh, a lot of like religious stuff it, it it just gets you know muddied, and they believe that there's only one thing or whatever. In, in the case of like this church here, it's like um, you see um, in South Park. Like I, I brought this up a bunch, but they they satirize a lot of stuff, of course. But they do bring up a lot of serious topics, and uh, they did this one episode about um, like a very religious couple, like make like praying for the the like uh, like their son had some for like terrible disease, right? And but they didn't believe in modern medicine, so they wouldn't like take their son to a you know normal hospital, right, to like just get tested and potentially fix something that is that was curable you find out that it was a disease a disease this kid had that it's like your kid has this and i don't remember what, exactly what it was but it was a curable disease absolutely and uh, they're just like well no we're we're super into prayer and we believe that our god will heal our son and it's like and uh they point out like well how do you know that modern medicine isn't your god answering your prayers that kind of thing you know what i mean so <laughs> it's always yeah. just the the they, they always have to religious people always kind of want to see like mirac miracles like this as opposed to just like well how do you know stuff like modern medicine isn't a gift from the gods you know what i mean it's like you know a bunch of people prayed for better health so gods somewhere pushed whatever it may be you know scientists forward to discovering you know a cure for this disease or whatever it might be you know a, a better this yeah. thing whatever yeah, everyone wants to look for the miracles, but they don't ever consider the concept of divine inspiration, which <clears throat> fiction goes into more than like actual history, but in general, it's just something that, yeah, a lot of people don't either want to or just don't want to see, or they tend to overlook the concept of divine inspiration. Right. It's kind of one of those things, too, with like... Uh... Uh, we, we've talked about it with um, just like any kind of media or games or whatever it may be these days, art, it doesn't matter, food. Um, if if something isn't the best of all time or like super freaking unbelievably amazing, uh, most people these days see it as trash when in all reality, most of the time it's not. It's just like solid and decent, but since it's not like innovative and new and breaking some kind of mold, it's like, oh, well, why should I bother with this? It's like, because it's a solid product and just because it's not like the new greatest thing of all time doesn't mean that it's like a fun experience or like a good sandwich or whatever you know what i mean <laughs> so it goes hand in hand with that kind of stuff where um divine inspiration is kind of like that well what if your god or gods just want to be kind of like hands off they don't want to like come down from the sky and be like all right i'm gonna part the red sea for you or whatever Obviously, that's not something God did, but still, he potentially gave the power to part the Red Sea, whatever it may be, that kind of stuff. Just kind of like more hands-off, as opposed to, you know, what Holo had to do here is 
this right here, just like right in front of everybody's face as opposed to just like, well, I'm just gonna kind of like poke into like a couple of scientist brains or artist brains or, you know, uh, uh, whatever it may be and just like give a divine inspiration instead. Like, I'm just gonna sprinkle a few ideas here and there cause they're close enough. Right, it's like, you know, it came to me a dream, in a dream and I forgot it in another dream. <laughs> Very, very Professor Farnsworth from Futurama. But yeah, it's just, it's one of those things where it's um, just kind of, it's always been kind of fascinating to me that more people are just like, they, they want like the, like that instant gratification, the, the, the big, like, you know, show offy stuff, like a, like a divide miracle like this and aren't willing to believe like, well, how do we know that, you know, all these technological advancements aren't just like, you know, in short divine inspiration. How do we know? You know, that's very well it could be. It's like this guy, whoever it was, is like, you know, hadn't really been known for anything. And all of a sudden he created like this new amazing, you know, uh, wonder drug that is now helping us with like this disease or whatever. So to me, I'd be like, so this guy has done nothing. And out of nowhere, you know, it's like that sounds kind of divine to me. <laughs> so th that is what it is. But um, yeah, well, we'll just have to take uh that for what it is um but it people of this era you know they were all about miracles that kind of stuff so it is what it is yeah i mean once again medieval era was all about control of information once again keep the masses stupid and productive right which random quick side thing is props to elsa for getting all this in writing by the way because if you don't get it in writing you're especially in today's age you know always get a receipt if somebody does work for you or you, you pay a bill randomly with cash or whatever it may be if you don't have a receipt whatever it may be you know could turn around and say you never paid us or we never did that work you can't hold us accountable for that what are you talking about we didn't put a faulty roof on your house whatever it may be you know what i mean always Get it in writing and always have a receipt that is signed by them. <laughs> like, yeah, we did this. So. But, uh, yeah, as it stands, this this plan worked out pretty well. Um, Lawrence had a, you know, a pretty solid uh, plan for this, which uh, he, he does point out that, yeah, you know, the contract with uh, the other town, which the name is escaping me at the moment. Uh, Enberk. Enberk was poison because it's why they resent you and if you can get rid of something like that and still be like it mutually beneficial and just have like a new deal where they don't like dislike the previous one and the new one is fine and everybody's fine with it then you might as well erase the past and start fresh with something new in this case where everybody's happy so you know because people will cling to it's like, oh, they're still using that old, you know, deal by, you know, Franz and, you know, they're clinging to it and whatever. So with a new deal like this with, you know, that's like backed by the bishop and all that stuff, it looks better across the board and everything that's coming out of it, such as the biscuits, uh, makes everybody happy. So uh, it's better to just kind of like, it's kind of like when you refinance, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, they, they went from a... <laughs> generic village pumping out wheat that the town was contractually obligated to buy at a bad price to now they're actually a specialty village putting out something that no one else nearby is rather than you know they already had an abundance of wheat and a lot of they had a literal baker's guild that was kind of running everything because of the sheer amount of wheat flowing through the town right and now Evan can stick around because now he has like pretty much the job that he kind of wanted anyway. So there you go. <laughs> kind of best of both worlds. Uh, we discussed uh, Elsa potentially following him to do whatever he does, but now he's like the, uh, you know, the go-between guy for all the just trade and information and all the he, what have you. Yeah, he still got what he wanted. Which he, he wanted to become a merchant, but he was looking to become a traveling merchant. He didn't like the area. And now he's a local merchant. Yep. So, um, as it stands, I'm sure it, uh, it worked out well for him. And he, he's still obviously young enough where, you know, if he wants to, he can go 
do something else but for now this will be good like just random experience for dealing with stuff on like a mass scale that kind of thing so that's Which good for him I, I mentioned this during the outro i don't know the exact context to it but i do know that uh evan and elsa are characters who do eventually come back for a later story or got it and that is kind of one of the things that uh you see it in in the uh, outro here is uh and i don't think i've ever really mentioned this but like when they uh when they're showing like their travel path which i believe is in the outro uh it might be in the intro i'm not entirely sure but they show the uh like their travel path from like the initial yeah like this this right here so um at a certain point they're going to be like you know not everything they're not going like in a straight line you know what i mean it's not like they're going they're, they're starting at like normandy beach in france and going toward like i don't know whatever poland or something that's due east you know what i mean they're not trying to end up in like warsaw you know what i mean they're kind of like you know dropping down like toward paris and then maybe up toward belgium and you know what i mean they're they're all within like uh, uh, like a geographic region and they're not just like going in a straight line from one place to another because they kind of have to be all in the same region. You know what I mean? Then I think this map kind of does like a good, uh, like is like a representation of like, you know, they're not just going in a straight line. Like they go to this, they're not like just going due east. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So uh, this is just something I keeps crawling across my camera yeah i keep noticing that it's like <laughs> just 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 keep getting a uh, sidetracked by fly across the screen there just hey <laughs> but yeah it's, it's kind of one of those things where um you know it's not uh mentioned in a lot of these kind of uh, like uh trade or anything is um you know you're not just going in a straight line you're, you're not completely just like going away it's kind of hard to be a uh, traveling trader if you're consistently getting farther and farther away from your home base you know what i mean <laughs> so you kind of got to be yeah. in that region yeah once again like the whole their whole deal is basically just that lawrence is doing his job in the general direction of her hometown and she's just kind of along for the ride right and that very well can take several months obviously is you know we talked about this kind of yesterday with slime with their technological massive technological advancement you know we're going from in slime anyway we're going from you know stuff taking weeks to stuff taking three hours but uh <laughs> obviously that's not going to happen in this show but uh case in point is you know their horse drawn carriage and you know it's not like the horse is galloping obviously it's just kind of cruising along so even in a small country area uh they are it's gonna take weeks to get around so you know, say like a, a region like say the size of like the germanic region like if you just mashed all those air like the holy roman empire the og holy roman empire together even a place like that if you're just like kind of like going in a circle around the outside of it that's still gonna take a while you know so you know, also going to take a while the freaking Crunchyroll player to stop being a nerd. <laughs> That's what it is. But, uh, yeah. Um, as it stands, solid plan, solid fly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, about what we expected, you know. Um, it's a shame we didn't get any more on, like, uh, Franz and Mendez's relationship in a way, but, uh, I don't think uh, Mendez was really like that bad of a guy, but he's more or less what you'd expect from like, uh, you know, a bishop of that era. You know what I mean? Without going it, yeah. into it too much, anybody who knows what I'm talking about, um, about what you'd expect, you know, uh, so probably portrayed that portrayed fairly well for what that was. But uh, I'm trying to see if I could find any sort of confirmation on it, but I believe from my random source material knowledge that the original run like the 17 volumes or whatever takes place over the course of around like five years so like a reasonable amount of time does pass over the course of it right and as it stands right now it hasn't even been a year right it's been like 
the better part of a year like Lawrence uh, showed up at that town to pick up that weed in like the spring and now it's like winter is coming <laughs> yeah because like they don't really go into a lot of the specifics of time passing but like a reasonable amount of time is passing because once again it while they kind of glossed over and mentioned it briefly like it's like weeks in between them reaching towns for the story right. arcs to happen yeah so like even though the story arcs themselves usually only take place over the course of like a couple of days there's like weeks to a month in between each of them so like we're still looking at like this close to like half a year at this point in the story yep so you know uh holo got all the information she needed here they became obviously local legends in the town more so with evan and elsa obviously because they you know, exactly what holo did uh <laughs> But uh, the the town folks themselves, you know, Lawrence is pretty much a, a local legend for brokering the deal and just, you know, doing what he did. So uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, he'll he'll be definitely welcome there. Um, it definitely feels like Elma is probably not Turio in disguise from everything Ema, we got. Yeah, Ema probably isn't but she could still possibly be that she is and just once again didn't reveal herself because once again i don't know the context that elsa that elsa and evan will come back and it will like eventually come back to the village or not just i just know that they are recurring characters right so as it stands a uh, pretty solid way to wrap up the season you know the journey continues we got the uh little stinger thing here at the end with uh, the char main character from parchment and obviously holo and probably obviously lawrence so you know this is kind of like the uh once again this this particular show is being told from holo's side as opposed to the previous one which was told from lawrence's side which is exactly why we're not getting like the internal monologues from lawrence because how the heck would holo know what he was thinking the whole time <laughs> so it was nice to kind of like wrap this back around to the uh the beginning of this year this uh season where they started with this and then i think in the middle of the season they kind of like did another like cutaways to uh, yeah. this so they did nice. during, we, we saw it the first episode the mid-season finale and then here in the actual finale yeah so it's kind of neat that they're doing this especially with the fact that you know um parchment is a thing and the fact that uh you know spice and wolf is continuing you know what i mean yeah, I know there is a pretty big jump between the end of Spice and Wolf and Parchment, time-wise. I don't know how big it is, I just know it's a pretty big one. And that, like, Lawrence is a character in Parchment, so was Holo. And, like, Lawrence is, like, not, like, super old, but he's reasonably old in Parchment. Right. But it's pretty obvious that this is him, because you can tell by that, like, the... the like his waist that it's yeah uh, he's still wearing more or less the same outfit yep so as it stands pretty solid way to wrap up the season um the season on a whole was really good as far as i'm concerned um i can't speak on the uh you know the um whatever you want to call it like the faithfulness to the source material um but for what it is yeah. you know yeah once again this whole like elsa Eben bit is past my knowledge of source material for like the stuff that I actually relatively know and can like point out. But this art wasn't even in the the uh, previous iterations. Once again, they went into like the full on like anime original stuff after the Amati arc. Right. Uh, one other thing uh, I'm curious about because I just brought up the whole, like, time difference between Parchment and, uh, the time gap between Parchment and, uh, Spice and Wolf's End was, uh, is a... I don't know if the continuation of Spice and Wolf takes place in that time gap between the end of Spice and Wolf and the start of Parchment, or if it runs, like, concurrently with Parchment time-wise got it like if it takes place after the time skip right 
So yeah, this is going to be definitely a, one of those things where if I find the time, um, like I'm doing potentially catching up on slime, uh, source material, that kind of thing. But uh, I'm going to have to pick and choose that because I don't have a, a ton of time. It's just mostly been recently dealing with uh, other nonsense and uh, just like, I'll, I'll just read, a, you know, a couple of chapters of something here and there and you know, eventually get through something. Uh, I've gotten through a couple shorter things, but uh, yeah, um, I'll just have to see. But yeah, as for this whole season, I enjoyed it. It was a it was a nice uh, break from our our usual stuff, and we have show we've done shows like this, you know, slice of life kind of. Uh, but uh, as it stands here, it you know it was very uh, for for what it is, it, it was different enough from what we we've done, and I can appreciate it. And uh, just like all, all the attention to detail that this show had, like uh, I. I mentioned multiple times with the, you know, the architecture, especially, um, that was very impressive. You know, the soundtrack was very good, uh, for what it was doing. You know, it, it conveyed like emotions and stuff like that very well in certain scenes, obviously like the, uh, the relationship developing between Lawrence and Holo over the course of it was very interesting. Obviously Holo being the hopeless romantic that she is and Lawrence being, you know, who he is, uh, produces a very interesting dynamic so that was fun um you know there there were certain like moments of you know drama and you know potential you know it, it had a lot of stuff it had um all the stuff that you could want from like a, a trader's perspective you know stuff like we we saw them having to be kind of like spies and and stuff like that um because uh a trader has to have multiple skills if they want to survive, especially in this era. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to show off that kind of thing because it's very relevant and historically relevant. Um, so I think they did a good job with that. Um, you know, Mark was a great character. He, we, we got a great line out of him. We got a great clip out of him. So that was fun. Uh, and I mentioned this back when we were wrapping up the, that arc with Amadi is, uh, I, I can understand why a lot of people don't like him and I can't speak for the original series, but for this one, um, it was just kind of one of those cases of, uh, he was trying to do a good thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? He thought he was doing a good thing, but uh, to quote Kratos, among other people, um, you don't know the whole story, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when you don't have all the information, y you could think you're doing a good thing, but uh, yeah, you might not know what the hell you're talking about and you're just kind of making an ass out of yourself, which is what he did. But at the end of the day, his intentions were mostly good. You know what I mean? Could he have been a little greedy and, you know, wanting to be, you know, to show off and, you know, steal someone's woman? Sure, absolutely. But initially you kind of have to, you know, have that thought of, oh, I kind of want to save this person from this apparently shitty situation that she's in. You know what I mean? So... But uh, yeah. Um, so, so I just looked it up real fast, just to just to like know for sure. And yeah, apparently the the like second arc, basically of second run of Spice and Wolf takes place later. And there's apparently about a once again. Dates aren't really stated in the sh in the series very much, so like it's kind of guesswork. But apparently, it's somewhere between like twelve to thirteen years between uh, the end of Spice and Wolf and the start of Parchment. That it. And the the uh the continuation of Spice and Wolf takes place after that time skip. Got it. So yeah, um, as it stands. Very solid season. I enjoyed it. Very little to complain about. And when there's this little to complain about, I don't even bring it up because I don't like to nitpick. Um, there are a few things that I could bring up, but they're not really like glaringly. Who cares? You know what I mean? It's it, it wasn't good enough to detract from my enjoyment of the series and uh, you know, even bother bringing up, you know, we've, we've obviously criticized stuff in the past, like the most recent Overlord season, which that movie's coming out. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Um, Far Away Paladin at some point, Age and I have to get to watching season two because we are definitely not doing that for the channel after the uh, <laughs> very, very, I'll be nice about it and say mediocre first season of that. Um, the roller coaster ride that was Tokyo Avengers for a while. Um, so we're not above criticizing stuff, but. 
Um, I'm not gonna go like into the freaking deep weeds here and like, oh man, I didn't like this thing at like, you know, 53 seconds into episode three. I thought that was like really bad for the sh And I've seen people do that. It's like, really? You're gonna bring something like that up? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, freaking Tokyo. We'll have to see if freaking season three ever even gets dubbed as a Disney. Uh, yeah. To for, for anybody who's wondering about that, who maybe potentially watched our Tokyo stuff, um, Disney got a hold of it. And when Disney gets a hold of anime, uh, yeah, no. Uh, the guy who voices the English, uh, the English VA for Chifuyu tweeted out like, yeah, uh, probably not going to happen. Uh, and that was like eight or nine months ago. So, um, as much as I'd like to continue Tokyo because I was enjoying it after like season two, especially and wanted to see what was going on. Um, might just have to go read the source material at that point. If I'm going to talk about it that way. Um, but, uh, yeah, as also, for the dub, the, you mentioned the Overlord movie from what I've heard, the Japanese reception of the Overlord movie, cause it's already aired over there, I believe, uh, was actually pretty good right which i mentioned before that like the paladin arc is considered to be like one of the best arcs and most important arcs in the series as a whole so it'd be pretty hard for them to fuck it up the problem really is just the fact that they are doing it as a separate movie and screwed over freaking season four as a result of it right when it should have just been like the focal point of season four or they should have you know just done the movie exclusively not this like weird middle ground of season four freaking doing like the before and after of the paladin arc without actually giving us the paladin arc yeah that was very weird uh production choice but as for spice and wolf um if it does come back in anime form we'll, we'll definitely do it because it's a it's a very good show um i enjoyed it it's a solid change of pace again I if you know if you're looking for a change of pace, I would recommend it. Um, yeah, I, I highly doubt we won't get a season two at this point because from what everything I've heard, this is done quite well. The source material is like a bestseller. Like it's considered to be like really freaking popular. Uh, and then this ending very much leaves it off as like, yeah, we intend to do a season two. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so... Um, yeah, I, I, I have nothing but good things to really say about this. I enjoyed it. It was, again, a nice change of pace from just, you know, your average, like, shonen, whatever, you know, like our atypical shows, you know, like Bleach, you know, MHA, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's kind of nice to just kind of take a break and just kind of enjoy something like this that's different, you know? So if you're looking for something different that's, you know, well-written, has a good atmosphere, you know, um also has like very wor real world implications with like the allegory for the catholic church and this that kind of thing um you know very real things that happened you know in the real world that kind of stuff so uh those are always interesting and then you have the mythological aspect obviously with the the obvious uh mythological beings you know holo being the obvious one but you know we came across a couple others and we'll probably come across several more uh as the series uh, progresses obviously so uh I guess I the current role player is sick of me, so I guess I should wrap this up. <laughs> I, I mentioned it before, but I do know so the dragon blank on her name, the freaking the bird chick. I Deanna. do know she, Deanna, yeah, I do know she makes an appearance in parchment at some point or another. I don't know if she ends up if she's ever another character who occurs like in Spice and Wolf itself at any point. Right. So yeah, as it stands, um, great season. I really enjoyed this. Um, nothing really else to say about it. Um, assuming we get season two at some point, we'll definitely do it. But uh, again, I just want to bring up again, as I mentioned at the beginning here is uh, with all the stuff that we do have coming up, uh, we're just probably going to let MHA finish up and uh, we'll probably leave Kite Man on Saturdays because that's still another uh, six episodes. Uh, so within six weeks, we're definitely going to be starting. If, if the dubs haven't started in six weeks, we got a problem. 
<laughs> if it's just Kite Man every week, you know there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, if the dubs still haven't started by the time Kite Man finishes, then we probably will just have to suck it up and do a season of other shows. Well, yeah, if honestly, if the dubs don't fin start by the time MHA finishes, we'll just have to start something else. Like I parry everything that was kind of like on our list. There's the Suicide Squad uh, anime that uh, I think that's almost over, but we can easily do that. Uh, Nier is ready to go, so we could start Nier at any point because that's already done. Uh, so we have stuff. It's just, uh, you know. Yeah, I still really want to watch frickin' uh... Mashal, but we haven't decided if that's going to be something that we try to find a way to work into the schedule or if we're just going to watch on our own time at some point. Yep. So, yeah, uh, as it stands right now, at least for like the next two, three weeks, it's just going to be Kite Man and MHA while we kind of take like a little breather before uh, while we wait for the dubs. And if we get like, say, say the say, for example, the dubs start like a week from today, which would be like the 27th, 26th of October. Um, and we get like a second week for sure, like on that second week, like, oh, this is the second week of the dub, then we'll just start it and push like MHA to like uh, Sunday and Kite Man to Saturday and just get the stuff started and then just let those two finish as like extras kind of deal. Because um, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff with Arcane especially anyway, so the end of the year here is going to be, uh, you know, fairly packed. But uh, yeah, so just wanted to get that out there again, so... Anything else you want to say about the Spice Mole Theory? Um, no, yeah, this was a good remake. Like, like I mentioned, like I never got to actually like fully catch up on Spice and all source material, but it was one of my like favorite shows back in the day. And just I really did want to get into it, but just never actually got around to actually reading the source material like a number of things like i've mentioned like i just have always really been really bad about actually reading source material for stuff even the things that i really want to like it's the biggest things that i always wanted to read the source material for were this uh soul eater helsing and then later on it became overlord and tanya and just i off and on read bits and pieces of all of their source material, but I've never actually been able to get myself to commit to sit and just read all of it. Yeah. And that's kind of what I've been doing with some of the stuff I've been reading is just like, if nothing is happening for like 10 minutes, I'm just like, I just bring up the last thing I was reading and just read a couple chapters for like 20 minutes or something. You know what I mean? And get a couple chapters here and there, whatever. And sometimes I'll read for like an hour, whatever. And it's been working out for me, you know, like right before I go to bed or something, just kind of wind down by reading uh, something so anyway so yeah ladies and gentlemen there you have it a uh, solid very solid season uh, we both enjoyed it so uh going forward um again it'll just be kite man and mha on friday and mondays uh, until the dubs for re-zero bleach don machi all that stuff um mf ghost <sighs> we have too much stuff <laughs> Yeah, I was looking over the list after you uh, mentioned it during the in mentioned the shows during the intro, but that's like that's like the bare minimum is still six for like what we've been doing. But there's still like five or six other shows that we also could have been doing, but just never decided to actually start. Right, it's crazy. A bunch of stuff has popped up on the radar. A bunch of very good stuff is coming out. So we'll just have to really pick and choose because. You know, I, we can't do more than seven videos a week. And even doing five is asking a lot for time wise. You know what I mean? Between recording, editing, all that stuff. So, you know, it is what it is, but we'll, we'll do what we can. So, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond, however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out soon in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was Spice and Wolf, season one, episode 25, uh, the end of season one here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and let Victoria roll the uh, stills of the season as we saw fit. So, uh, Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. Yeah. Is, is that like uh, Ruberios and Lubelios? <laughs> I'm screwing up my R's and L's now thanks to Slime. I blame them. Fuse, tell your people what the English names of your places are, for the love of God. <laughs> but anyway.
everybody have a good morning evening afternoon whatever it is for you have a good one we'll see you next time Mr. Lawrence, been a long time. You haven't aged a day. Hey, hmm? that one is taken. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing those like and subscribe buttons. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and we hope to see you again in the future.